Hello everyone and, and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about my Camp Chef oven and just to let you know I'm not real big in the product reviews. Uh, that's not really you know why we did the channel or, or our initial goal but sometimes some things just strike you as being something that you want to share with the world because it, it just does exactly what you want to do. And for me right now, it is this Camp Chef Camp Oven. Um, it's something that I've always wanted. The very first teardrop that I saw in person had one of these inside of it. And ever since that day, in my mind, I've won the teardrop with this Camp Chef stove oven in it. I love to cook when we go camping. I like to cook anyway. I just don't have much time to do it. So when we go camping or sailing, you know, that gives me time to relax and, and time to, to do some cooking. So to have a stove and oven in a, in a teardrop camper like this, it, it's just awesome. Yesterday we were up here um, at our private campsite in the woods and I made a, um, it was a pumpkin crunch dish that I make. It's a dessert that, you know, this time of year is just really yummy. Uh, I baked it in our oven for an hour and it, it turned out, you know, superb. Uh, in fact, I had it for breakfast this morning. It's so good. So I want to take a few minutes here and just share with you my thoughts on this oven. Um, we've taken it now on a couple trips. Uh, we've used it up here in the woods, used it in the driveway to, to cook breakfast one morning. Um, and I'll tell you why I did that here in a minute. But um, it's just worked great. Um, there are a few, you know, little things about it, quirks maybe that I'll, I'll share with you that I figured out how to work around. Uh, but overall, just very thrilled with it. So let me grab the camera here and I'll, I'll give you a closer look at this, this setup and what I did to make it work in our setup here in the, in the Bushwhacker 10 HD galley. So let's grab the camera and I'll give you a closer look. Let me just start off by saying that getting this oven stove combination to fit in this teardrop camper was not the easiest thing I've ever done. It was so close to not fitting that at one point I didn't know if I was going to get it to work or not. Uh, but I kept playing with it, trying different ideas, and I finally got it to where it will go inside the galley on a slider and the lid will shut and there's clearance between the two. And that's really all I needed. So um, it, it, it's worked great. I've just been thrilled with how it sets up. And, and here's a little quirk maybe about myself more so than the stove. When I level the camper, I level the camper based off the, the stove because and this is probably a personal issue of mine. When I make eggs in the morning, I hate to have my eggs all run to one side of my skillet because the stove's not level. So I level the camper based off the stove and the rest of the camper is, is pretty level based off of that because it's all in the same plane. Uh, but that's, this is how important this little stove is to me. So from the factory, uh, it comes pretty much as you see it. Uh, from the front side. I had to make a few changes to it to get it to work for our application, but it comes out of the box looking just like this. It's got two burners uh, that you open up. It's got two 7,500 BTU burners for that, and then it's a 3,000 BTU burner down in the oven. So it's not the highest powered oven in the world, uh, but you're not at home either. So, um, you know, it, it takes a little while for it to warm up. Uh, and this unit, is the basic unit, just the camp oven that they call it. So it does not have a self-regulating oven. And what that means is unlike your oven at home, when you set it at 350 degrees, it stays you know, somewhere right around 350 degrees. This one does not. It is simply a, a gas control valve that you personally adjust the flame level to. So it takes a little playing around with. Uh, you can't just go and turn it on and, and walk off and, and expect it to cook your food at a set temperature because it just won't do that. Uh, but I like to tinker with things. That's just kind of my nature. So for me to take a peek at the, the temperature gauge every now and then and make a little adjustment to the gas valve, that's just kind of what I do. So so I'm tickled to death, you know, with this setup. It works well for us. Uh, they do make the one with the self-regulating oven. I believe it's called the uh, either the Pro or the Deluxe version. I forget now. Uh, but the issue with that for me was it's two inches taller. And there just been would would have been no way that I could have got it to go in and out of this galley without really getting you know very invasive with the, the front wall and the camper and moving that forward to get this to slide in even further so so this one worked out really well for us like i said goes in comes out does everything we need from that aspect um, cooking on it some people say that uh, the main burners are hard to get to turn down um, it is just a simple control valve um, and let me walk around to the front side here and I will show you how those burners work and how I found a way to get them to turn down to where they're just barely a glow coming out of the burner. So here on the front side of the stove, 
what we've got is obviously the lid that goes up. It has two uh, wind screens on it. They swing out this direction. I'm going to leave this one in just so that you get a little better view of what goes on because it'll probably block the view if I set that up. But these little things, you just merely squeeze them. And there's slots here in the side of the stove that these slide into. And that just holds that position, pulls the lid up out of your way. That works really well. The burners, I really like the burners on this stove because unlike a lot of camp stoves, they have little bitty, maybe two inch, inch and a half burners, and you get this real hot spot in your in your cook surface, whether it be your, a pot or a skillet. These are almost four inches in diameter and spread out a nice flame across the bottom of your skillet or your pot. Um, so much so that my, um, I believe it's an MSR um, collapsible tea kettle that I use to heat water up in the morning. It's, it's kind of like got a, um, a silicone top to it and a metal bottom. I have to be careful that the flame doesn't get too high and wrap around up to that silicone and melt my pot. Um, so, you know, in some aspects, it's almost too big. Uh, but I'd really have something too big and be able to control the flame than to have a little bitty pinpoint heat source. So from that aspect, I really like these burners. They're piezo ignition. So it's just like your gas grill at home, probably, where you press the button and you hear the click. So this, you turn the knob and you hear the click. Now, the one tip when you go to light your burners, I see a lot of people on videos, they're, they're turning it click, 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 you know, three or four times to get it to light. So when you open your valve or turn this valve to the start position, if you just turn that slowly and wait for just a second, you might be able to hear the gas actually start to come out of your burner. And it takes a little while because the gas pressure on these LP stoves gets broke down to less than a half a PSI. So it's not a real high pressure stream of gas that's coming out of there. It's just a, a very small um, you know, trickle of gas that comes up through these burners. So it takes a second to get up into the burner and get to where the PZO can actually light it. So if you take this and you turn it, you can hear it right there, then you click it, it lights right up. If you go and just turn it so fast that it clicks, now it's already been lit, so it's going to well, prove me wrong here but if you start it up cold and it hasn't been lit for a few minutes if you turn it fast it may not light right away so if you let it get going you let that gas get up there then turn it and click you're good to go so you can see it's got a nice wide flame on it that when the <laughs> genius me goes and leaves the the grill or the uh the grate off of it so i nice stick that back on there I, I'll, I'll admit i was cooking dinner last night for um for four people. So I cooked dinner for four uh, with this stove and then I grilled steaks on the fire. So, you know, it's a very capable stove in that aspect. But, you know, I was running back and forth between the grill and, and this and my noodles that I was making boiled over and it kind of made a mess down here around the burner. Um, but I'm glad to say it came off. You know, so I got it all cleaned up, but I had this grate off clean and something that I missed. So, so the grate's back on now, so we're good to go. Um, so we'll light her back up. So there we got nice flame. So what I've heard people say is it may not turn down very far. So you can see if you can turn down, you don't know how well that's showing up in the camera, but it just doesn't turn down, you know, to where you've got just a glow of a flame. And sometimes that's what you want when you're just trying to simmer something. Because I noticed, you know, when I was using it up in Michigan, that even on this lowest setting, uh, it was still boiling water. So what I did to cheat that. Um, and there's one caveat to this, and I'll tell you in a second. But what you can do to get that flame to turn on even lower is turn it up um, to where it's wide open. You got this big flame. Push it and turn, and just start turning slowly. And you're going to shut that gas off, um, just like you're going to turn it off. And you could make it go down to where it's just a glow like that. You know, maybe even a little lower than that coming out. Now, the one caveat to this is you can't do it when it's really windy. <laughs> so we were up there in a gale warning with 40 mile an hour winds and obviously that's going to blow out. So that's the one one downside to that is you can get it to come down to a very low simmer but you know it wouldn't matter what side of the valve you know position you were on a strong wind is going to blow it out. Even with these wind screens up you know the wind was just whipping like crazy uh, and then one would come in there and wipe my flame out. So basically I had to cook dinner that one night uh, on high setting to keep the flame going. But I think that would be the case with pretty much any stove in 40 mile an hour winds. So I'll, I'll take it. You know, it, that was a minor, minor issue. So we've got the two controls for the burners, one on each side right here. Both work the same. You'll know, turn till they click. The PZO lights it up. You're good to go. Um, next to this knob right here, we've got a temperature gauge for the oven. 
and I was very surprised. I've got a hanging temperature gauge in there that I used in Cindy Shasta to, to see how close that um, self-regulating oven was to the actual temperature, uh, which turned out to be really close. <clears throat> so I took that out of the Shasta and hung it in this so I could compare a true reading to what this gauge is saying. And I was pleasantly surprised. It is it's really close. So, but this is just merely a temperature gauge. Doesn't matter what you do with the valve, you know, this gauge is not going to control the heat output, like I was saying. It's not self regulating. So, to light the oven, it's the same thing. And if, when you look through this uh, glass, and it's got a very nice glass to, to let you see into the oven, I mean, you can see everything in there cooking. But when you go to light, there's a hole down here in the front. And I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but right there, there's about a half inch diameter hole that looks down into the burner area. So, when you go to light it, you push in and turn. And it lights right up. So we've got the oven lit now. You can see the burner flame down in here. And like I said earlier, it's a 3000 BTU oven. So it takes a little while to get this up to temperature. And then once it gets up to temperature, you have to be the one that controls how it stays at that temperature. So once you know I leave it on high as it warms up, you know, and you can see the glass starting to fog up now a little bit because it's starting to heat up and, and cook that water vapor off. So as it comes up to temperature, I just start playing with the valve and turning it down to where it maintains it. So yesterday I was cooking at 350 degrees and it was about 50 degrees outside. So it took a little while to get everything in the oven, you know, between the oven itself and, you know, my pumpkin crunch that I had in a, an aluminum disposable 9 by 13 pan. It took a little while to get that all up to temperature, but once it did, then I was able to turn this down to, to maybe a quarter setting and come back every five, 10 minutes, just kind of walking around. I was splitting some firewood and, and doing some other things. And I just kind of kept coming back and forth, checking this out and making, you know, small adjustments to it. Sometimes if it gets really carried away on you and you don't catch it, now you may have to pop the oven open, door open just a little bit to bleed some heat out. Like I said, it's not self-regulating, but you're camping. So, you know, you kind of give, you know, give up a little bit of the amenities you have at home to have, you know, creature features out in the woods. So it, it worked very well. I mean, it, it cooked just like it would at home. I just had to be the one to maintain that temperature. So, you know, you can just turn it back off when you get up to the high setting, push and turn, you hear the click, it shuts the gas off. You can look in there, the gas is off. So like I said, the window in it is very nice. It's very tall. Uh, it covers pretty much the whole cooking area inside the oven. So you can look inside and see your food cooking in the oven. I probably should have done a video yesterday while I was cooking, but I just had so much stuff going on uh, getting the campsite ready for guests that we had last night that I, I didn't have an opportunity to do that. But uh, trust me, it was really good when we had, had dessert last night. And even my breakfast this morning heated back up was really good. Um, the oven is sized for a 9 by 13 pan. So I went on a shopping trip, and that's a whole other story, but um, I finally found a 9 by 13 copper baking sheet. So I've used this to to make biscuits on, cookies on. Um, it, it, it works well, fits right in there. And I can even leave the temperature probe that I've got hanging in there in the oven, um, just cause I forgot to take it out. And there's still room for this to go in. Um, I also found a, a, they call it a baking pan. I'm gonna use it to make pies in when I'm at the, the campsite, but uh, it's copper as well, fits right in there with the nine inch. And then these things, uh, I talked about these on a previous video. But um, I'm just going to share this with you again because these are really slick. So I make a lot of ovens, or ovens, I make a lot of muffins for breakfast, you know, when we're camping or on the boat. So I didn't want to give up the space for a muffin tin or a muffin pan, whatever they're called. So what I did was I got a copper jumbo muffin pan and I proceeded to cut it apart and get the individual muffin cups out. And let me just tell you, that's not easy. You know, it was about an hour of, of, twisting and, and fighting and getting them. But I knew that the cups were individual, but the way the pan was stamped around it, you know, to not tear up the, the cup when I got it out, it was a real chore. But in the end, I got all six out. So I've got six jumbo muffin cups and I just set them on this pan. And the reason I set them on the pan is the, the great, the dimensions between the rods inside the oven on the, the, the rack, are just a little bit too wide for this to sit. They will do it, but boy, it's it's really tight to get them on there. So I just set them on this pan, um, cookie sheet, slide the whole thing in there and it works great. The great thing about the copper is nothing sticks to it. 
you merely just wipe them out and you're done, good to go, which is really important when you're out camping. So when you're done, they all just stack together and you're good to go. One other option I'd like to share with you is, and I bought this separate from the stove, but it is made by Camp Chef as well. And it's sized specifically for these stove oven combinations. And let me fish it out. It, it stores underneath the slider. I uh, had room because the slider had to sit up off the floor. So that space underneath there, you know, essentially would have been wasted space, but I found ways to utilize that space for storage. And what I've got back here, if I can get it out with the wing up, is an iron griddle top that sits right over top of both burners. And I didn't get a chance to use it in Michigan. I really wanted to, but the weather just wasn't conducive for it. So when I got home, you know, I said I had cooked breakfast in our driveway. When we got home, I set the camper up to dry everything out and, and do a few other little things to it. And while I had it set up, I thought, well, I'm going to try that griddle top out because I'd never have used one that had a surface as rough as this. It's, it's an iron griddle top. Um, it's not a cast iron, I don't believe. It's, it's just iron that's formed, but it's got a very rough surface to it. So I was really kind of curious about it. A friend of mine said, oh, you got to try it. You'll love it. So I set everything up, went outside to, to cook breakfast. So I cooked a big thing of hash browns on it. And, and by golly, nothing stuck. I, I put some, some butter on there to get started with, put my hash browns on there and cooked everything up. And it, it just did a phenomenal job of cooking. And then I made our eggs on top of it as well. Again, nothing stuck. And, you know, and as rough as that is, I was just blown away by the fact that, that nothing stuck to it. Um, it. It just worked really well. So, you know, I had always kind of wanted a Blackstone type cook grill surface thing, um, but I didn't want to give up the space or have to lug that thing around with us. So now I've got, you know, essentially a Blackstone grill kind of miniaturized to fit our stove oven, um, but it, it covers the area perfectly. Both burners heated up really pretty evenly. You know, I couldn't really tell a hot spot from one side to the other. And over here, I could turn this down like I showed you with, with turning that valve, you know, almost all the way to off and have my hash browns over here just staying warm while I cooked our eggs on this side. And then I had our biscuits cooking down uh, below. Now, one thing about that, when you go to do a breakfast like that, you kind of got to think about the order in which you do things. So fortunately, I thought just a second before I did this, I made the gravy first before I put the grill on top because it wipes out both burners. So I would not have been able to make my gravy at the same time that I had the grill top on it. So I just made the gravy first. Um, it stayed warm in the pan. I set it up on a, a pot holder on the countertop while I went ahead and made our hash browns and our eggs on this. But I love this. I mean, this is for, I think it was like $45 and free shipping, if I remember right. So for 45 bucks to have the equivalent of a Blackstone for, for what we're going to use it for, I mean, that, that was just awesome for me. And plus the fact that I can store it underneath the thing while we're traveling, that's even better yet. So it was a good use of space. I really recommend this if, if you're interested in cooking on, on a flat surface like this. Um, you know, give it a try for $45. I, I've just been tickled to death with it. So you're probably tired of looking at me and listening to me yap on about this thing. Let me put this up. I'm going to grab the camera and give you kind of a close-up view of the burners, show you how you can turn it down like what I was talking about, show you the oven burner, how that's working, um, and just give, kind of give you a close-up of it. And then I'll go over the changes I had to make and how adaptable the stove can be for use in certain situations like this. So here we'll give you a close-up view of the front. I think Wilson's hoping that it was time to cook dinner again, but he's walking away disappointed. <laughs> so here we've got the two burners up on top. Like I said, almost four inches across. Uh, give a nice wide flame when you go light it up. There you can see it lights up. We'll turn it down here and just to show you what we were talking about. So probably kind of hard to see there, but it, it's still a pretty good flame. We got about a, a three eighths inch, a half inch tall flame. Now, if you turn that back up to where it stops, you can see you got a really wicked flame there. Push in and turn, and then just start turning slowly towards the off position. And you're essentially just shutting the gas off, just like you're going to shut the, the burner off all the way. And you can just stop right there and even go a little lower to where it's just a glow coming out. And as long as the wind doesn't puff it out on you, you know, it, it'll sit there and simmer just like that and, you know, until you physically shut it off and hear the click and then it, it goes out like that. Um, here on the front, 
give you a close-up view of the temperature gauge. Um, you know, it, it says it will go up to 400 degrees, and it will. It just takes it a little while to get there. Uh, the oven control right here in the middle. Here is your left burner control. They give you this nice little um, heat shield, and they say to, to only handle or handle this only. So when you open up the oven, this handle does get pretty warm over time. So I can see why they did that. You know, you just merely pull this open. They got two racks. Uh, so far, I haven't had to take one out. I just uh, merely cook here on the bottom rack. <clears throat> here is the hole that I was talking about to look in. And I'll go ahead and light the oven while you're, you're looking in the hole there. Um, so it didn't light the first time. There we go. I just wasn't looking right. Now you can see the burner. It probably did light the first time. And I just wasn't low enough to see it. But, you know, when you're standing outside and you look down at an angle in there, you see the blue flame. So that's how you can tell when your oven is lit. Um, you know, and you, you start off at high and it goes all the way down to low like that. Um, and you can hear the gas flow change as you do that. So you know that's actually making a change to your, to your setting. And then go back up to the stop, turn back off to the click, and the oven is back out. Just a... Just a super nice little little feature to have an oven and a teardrop like that. So as far as things that I had to change in order to use it in the teardrop, uh, one of the first things I had to do was remove the back handle. So I left the front handle because there was room for it. But on the back, in order to get this stove to go back far enough, I had to remove that handle. So that was no big deal. I think there were four screws held it in and kind of fished it out to the back there. Um, to shorten it down, uh, because it was physically too tall to go uh, in here. It was just, it was taking up way too much room. I removed the rubber feet on the bottom of it. It had four rubber feet that were almost an inch tall, um, and it just made the whole thing even taller. So in order to get this compressed down even lower, I took those feet off, and the stove now is sitting on the bottom of the slider. So I knew that that could probably get warm because you know it is an oven and it's going to have heat in it. So two reasons I did this, I used eighth inch plate steel for the bottom of my slider and the, the stove is mounted to that plate steel. So I don't have to worry about getting hot and the eighth inch plate steel is very strong and is thin. Uh, so I don't have to worry about flexing. The stove weighs right at 30 pounds. So I couldn't use eighth inch thick plywood because that would just bow in the center and it just wouldn't work. So I used the eighth inch plate steel to set this on. And then in order to make sure the oven was able to breathe properly, you can see that I drilled a series of holes to match the air inlet holes for the oven in the bottom. And that has worked out just fine. Um, they're the same size. They line directly up with the the holes on the bottom of the oven, so that solved that issue. The other thing I had to do, and let me drop this wing here real quick. So the, the lid goes back to let these clear, and then they snap over this little knob right here, or form bump in the lid, and then you can shut your lid and your wings will stay in place. So on the back side of the stove, you can see that you've got air inlet for the top burners here, these are the lines um, that go down to the oven itself, uh, your gas line, and then this goes up to your pilot light or to your um, control for that. Um, so you want to leave these open, and there's heat that comes out from the oven as, it, as it's running. So to keep all that heat from building up inside of the, the kitchen area, I put it on the slider this way at 90 degrees so that I can have it outside the stove or outside of the galley while the stove is burning so I don't get a heat buildup in there. But one of the big things I had to do was the gas inlet on this. When you get it from the factory, it's going to have a, a regulator come out and is set up to use with a one pound cylinder, you know, the green Coleman one pound cylinder models of LP. Well, I was going to set this up to burn off of our 20 pound cylinder and they sell a kit to do that. It comes with a hose and you hook it up to your, your 20 pound cylinder. But what I needed was to make this as close to the stove as possible. And the kit that they sold was just too far off the stove. So what I did myself was cut apart the original fitting that stuck out about this far before the regulator stuck out even further. I cut that apart to get the brass threaded part. And then I went to the hardware store and I got a brass 
quarter inch to three eighths inch flare 90. And I used my same equipment that I use on HVAC work and soldered those two brass connections together. So now I've got my three eighths inch brass flare that comes with my gas hose uh, from a distribution manifold underneath the camper, comes up to here and feeds the gas in. I used a hardening thread sealant to lock that in place on there so that it doesn't move and it seals so there's no gas leaks. And then when it came to the gas line, I made a standoff down here so that this doesn't physically move from this point to this point. But using a service loop inside here, I was able to make the gas line essentially self recoil back inside when you push the stove back in. So I had to do a few modifications to the stove in order to get it to work for us. But now it's set up and, and it just works great. We're, we're really tickled to death with this. Um, we've used it, you know, every time we go out to cook with and, you know, two thumbs up. Hopefully at this point of the video, you're still awake and still hanging in there with us. But uh, I just can't tell you, you know, how much I, I love this little stove. I mean, it's just, to me, it's the neatest little thing. I have a ball cooking, you know, baking things in the woods. Um, you know, we're going to make cookies probably tonight. Uh, you know, muffins in the morning. It's, it's just, it's just fun. So, you know, hopefully this, you know, kind of gives you a, a little inspiration. Maybe check one of these things out. See if it'll work for your camper. Um, I've even seen people set them up on their picnic tables and have them outside. Uh, we were at a vintage camper rally here about a month ago with Cindy Shasta. And there was a guy set up across from us and he had it sitting on his picnic table making an apple crisp. So, you know, people have these stoves and they use them. So I just wanted to share it with you, you know, my take on the stove and, and what we were able to do to it and how we were able to utilize it in our teardrop camper. So just want to say thank you very much for watching. You know, stay tuned for more videos and, uh, you know, go camping.